Lords, and thank you all for coming tonight, and I guess some of you this week, and I appreciate you coming, and being in service, appreciate uh, Brother uh, Ross uh, singing uh, tonight, looking out in the meeting, and uh, I was preaching over at Steve Kogel's tent meeting, uh, I guess it's last year sometime, and uh, I got a message I preach about Jabez because you never know do you ask. And uh, Brother Ralph called me earlier in this year. He called me. said, Brother Rick, I'm getting married. I said, wow. He said, you never know do you ask. <laughs> but I was talking to her at a camp meeting in Ohio earlier in the year, and I like what she said. Uh, she said, well, actually, the first time he asked me, I said, no. <laughs> she said, because I just got saved, and I like this answer. She said, I just got saved. And she said, I wanted to learn to love the Lord before I learned to love anybody else. Amen. And then the, the next time, she asked him. Amen. Amen. And I said, yes. <laughs> I bet you did. I bet you didn't hesitate. <laughs> Where's her heart? Where's her heart? 13 days, she had the ring on her finger. Amen. 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 I know he's been married long. You say, how you know that? Because he said, honey, bring me that book up here. And she jumped up and running broke. <laughs> she been married long. Oh, she said, yes. Yeah. She said, yes. <laughs> Genesis 6 tonight, Genesis chapter 6, and we're going to read uh, uh, about uh, most of 14 verses tonight, Genesis 6. It came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. Yeah. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, man of renown. And God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast of the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Jacob. The earth also was corrupt before God. The earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. Behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord, this evening. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the privilege, the, yes. the blessing, Lord, to have a place to preach yes. on Friday night. And folks that uh, want to hear some preaching, and folks that want to gather out and worship the Lord. Very and uh, Father, I know some of these folks have probably worked today. Uh, they didn't really feel like coming, but they came anyway. I know some of them, Lord, have got health problems, and they didn't feel like getting out tonight, but they came anyway. Lord, would you bless them tonight for their effort. And I pray for that one tonight 
that may not be under the tent, that may be outside the tent, but lost tonight. I pray the Spirit of God would speak to their heart and they might come tonight as the preacher said, even before the preacher gets done preaching, yeah. that they might come and just get in the altar and pray and say, God, what must I do to be saved? Yes. Now, Lord, help me tonight, I pray. Give me the ability that I don't have. And Lord, help me to preach it right. And I'll thank and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. We have uh, read here in these verses that we've read tonight what Jesus would have called in Matthew 24, verse 37. Jesus would have called this the days of Noah. Yeah. I didn't mispronounce that. That's the way it's wrote there. The days of Noah. And we can see from what we read tonight that these were perilous days. You say, why do you say that? Because the Bible said the earth was corrupt and the Bible said that the earth was filled with violence. Oh, yeah. And for the people that lived in this time, these were the last days. The last days. They were about over with. We find ourselves tonight in such a time like this. Amen. Now, Amen. normally tonight we could look at this and, and we could focus in on chapter 4, uh, verse 4. That's interesting. And verse, uh, verse 2, that's interesting. And we could talk tonight about the sons of God. And I have some opinion on what that is and what was going on there. And I'm sure you do as well. But we won't talk about that tonight. We could talk about the society of that day. We could talk about what the people were doing in that day. The Bible tells us there in Matthew 24, 37, the Bible tells us that they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage and buying and selling. And it tells us what the society of that day was doing. Yeah. And uh, we could just settle in there and we could talk about what they were doing back then. We could even talk about the old shipbuilder himself, Noah. Uh, he's a good subject. We could talk about how Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. We could talk about how that God gave him the uh, dimensions and how that Noah built that monstrosity of a boat even today. And we could talk about that. Uh, but, but it's not the sons of God that's got me interested tonight what they were doing. It's not even society that's got me interested tonight about what they were doing. And I'm not even interested tonight in Noah, the old shipbuilder, in what he was doing. What I'm interested in tonight is what was the Lord doing? Amen. What was the Lord doing in these days that we have just spoken about? Well, I want to give you three things tonight, and I hope the Lord will be my helper tonight. But I want you to look at verse 3. And the Bible said, The Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with men, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. I see here tonight, used to years ago when I started preaching, 44 years ago, there was hardly a revival you'd ever go to that some old live alone preacher wouldn't quote that verse right there and say the Lord uh, will not always strive with Amen. men. Uh, uh, but I don't hear it much in our kind of a day. But yet it's still there in the Bible. And I just have a, I just have a, a, a thought. I just have a belief. I just uh, think that whatever they were doing back in that day, whatever society was doing, uh, Whatever Noah was doing, whatever uh, the sons of God were doing in that day, uh, I know a lot of that's going on in our kind of a day. Uh, but I believe that whatever God was doing in that day, uh, that God is doing in our day uh, uh, the same thing that God did uh, uh, right before the end of that 
antediluvian age, whatever God was doing back there, I believe God's doing the same thing uh, uh, tonight. Uh, uh, while that we've lived down here uh, uh, to the last days of the church age, uh, now I believe that God is doing the exact same thing uh, that God was doing uh, in the days of Noah. You say, well, okay, preacher, but what was God doing? Uh, uh, well, in our verse here, the Bible said the Lord uh, was warning. Uh, the Lord was warning. Uh, I believe the Lord is warning tonight. Uh, I believe that God is trying to warn uh, the people of our day uh, uh, that it, that time is running out. It's about over. Amen. Uh, uh, everywhere you look, you know, you see the warnings of God. Uh, uh, God has always done that. Uh, why in our, in our country, in, in this community, why you couldn't drive two miles without seeing a church steeple. You say, what's that? That's God warning, amen. Yes, amen. Uh, as I come up the road, somebody had took time uh, uh, to nail up a sign on a tree on the side of the road uh, that said, Jesus uh, is coming soon. Uh, you say, what is that? That's God's a warning, amen. A uh, few years ago, I went to the hospital there in Glasgow to visit somebody. And as I left the hospital, I got to thinking about the warnings of God. Uh, and uh, when you leave that hospital, which in itself is the warning of God, uh, every time you pass a hospital, uh, God is letting you know uh, uh, that one of these days it's appointed unto us to die. I can, I can leave the hospital and I can go down the road just a little ways uh, and uh, I can see a funeral home. Uh, and that warns me, hey, you better be getting ready. I, I can go right past the funeral home and look up on the hill. Uh, and there's a church up there with a steeple stuck in the air. Uh, and people pass this stuff every day. Uh, uh, but don't think anything about it. Uh, but God was a trying to warn them. Uh, you say, what was God warning them about? Well... He said that man's days uh, shall be 120 years. Uh, God was warning man uh, that his time was running out. Uh, he was telling man, uh, you got 120 years. Uh, can I tell you tonight, if you're not saved, uh, time is running out. Uh, can I tell you tonight that if you're saved and backslid away from God, uh, can I tell you tonight that time is running out? Uh, uh, somebody's asked, uh, brother asked me in there drinking coffee tonight. He said, brother prophet, how long you been preaching? Uh, I said, 44 years. Uh, I said, I've been doing it a lot longer than I'm going to do it. Amen. Uh, uh, that's true of everybody and under this tent. Uh, uh, most of you, except for the little kids and the babies, uh, you've been here longer than what you're going to be here. Uh, and God was warning the people of that day uh, time is running out amen uh, God will look at verse 3 God said my spirit shall not always strive with man uh, not only was man's time running out uh, but I want you to know also uh, uh, that God's patience was wearing out uh, you know we look at God and we think that God uh, I'll always wait well God is a patient being, and I'm glad He is. I'm glad that God has waited all this time. You say, why? Because if the Lord had come in 1963, I would have been lost and undone without God or His Son. I'm glad that God is patient. I'm glad tonight that God, uh, that God is a patient God. And some people are more patient than other people. But let me tell you this. Even God, even God's patience will run out one day. Amen. And I tell you, I think God is telling us, my spirit's not going to always strive with man. God said, I've waited. I've had patience. I've took my time. I give you time. And the long suffer ought to be counted as salvation. But God said uh, there will come a time when God's patience is wearing out. Uh, I've been saying this all year. Uh, 
I've been saying if something don't happen, uh, something's about to happen. Amen. Yeah. Uh, I tell you, this world cannot go on uh, yeah. uh, with it spitting in God's face yeah. and, and doing the way they're doing. Uh, this world cannot go on doing that. Uh, uh, on and on, God. Uh, he may have waited a long time, but he's not going to wait as long Amen. Uh, as he has been. Amen. Uh, listen, God was warning man, time is running out. God was warning uh, uh, that his patience would soon wear out. Uh, yeah. I like what Jonah said. Jonah said, uh, uh, the Lord is slow to anger. I'm sure God he is. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Matter of fact, that's one, one of the qualifications. Uh, uh, you know, for a bishop, uh, according to the Schofield Bible, the qualifications of a bishop. Uh, and he says, uh, the husband of one wife. Uh, and then he says this, uh, he says, uh, no striker, uh, not soon to be angry. Uh, and uh, if you'll do them last two, it'll help you with that first one. Amen. Uh, Amen. Uh, but I want you to know, listen, uh, someone said, why would a preacher need to be slow to anger? Uh, you take your back to church and you'll find out. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm telling you that. Amen. But the Lord, Jonah said, the Lord is slow to anger, full of mercy. Thank God He is. Yeah. Amen. Lamentations 3 and 21. This I recall to mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Amen. Amen. Someone said, I don't know why China ain't already fired a bomb. I don't know why Iraq ain't already done this. Only one reason. It's not because they don't want to. It's not because they wouldn't if they could. But God's holding them back. Amen. Amen. But I want you to know that God ain't going to hold them back forever. God's patience will wear out. Then I want you to see this. God was warning men uh, that his wickedness uh, is waxing out. Amen. Maxing out uh, the wickedness of man. Uh, oh, our world has become so wicked tonight. Uh, uh, so ungodly tonight. Uh, I used to when I, I didn't even know words. Uh, the only way I might know them is if I went into a men's bathroom uh, and someone had scratched it in the stall. Uh, uh, that would have been the first time I would have heard it or seen it. Uh, but now you can go into a restaurant. You can go into Lowe's. Uh, uh, you can go anywhere and you'll hear men take God's name in vain. Uh, you'll hear men use words uh, that used to or never used in the toilet. You say, what is this man? Say, man uh, it's waxing words. 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 Someone said, preacher, someone said, how could our nation be in such a shape and size? How could that take, that take place? Take place? Uh, very easy. Uh, very easy. Uh, easy. In the last uh, days, uh, uh, wicked uh, men uh, were wax uh, men uh, and worse. You see, there was a time when the politicians, even if they wouldn't say they had some morals about them, they would never say words in public. Sunday night on 
on Sunday night. I was riding by myself. I was riding by myself. Early, early for a meeting. And there was a, a, a lady, lady that come, lady come around in front of me. In front of me. And uh, I didn't pull out in front of her. I didn't run her off the road. There was no problem whatsoever. But she come around me. And saw me. I guess as a preacher. With a suit and a tie on. And she come around me. And she told me I was number one. I was number one. Yes, <laughs> for no reason at all. No reason Amen. at all. Amen. And I'll tell you what. I, I followed her all the way almost to church. Almost to and church. she just kept and telling me kept I was telling number one. I was number you one. say, what is yes, this? That's the wicked, ungodly world that, that we're living in. And men are getting men wicked and wicked and wicked. And, wicked and, wicked and, wicked and, wicked and wicked God's not going to bless with it forever. He is a patient God. Amen. Do you ever think about this? Just think about this. The Bible said over in 1 Peter. First Peter. The Bible said in verse 18, verse 18, for Christ also has one suffered for sins, for sins, just for the unjust, for the unjust that he might bring us to God, bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh and quickened by the Spirit, and by the Spirit. Listen to verse 19, verse 19, which also he went and preached to the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when he was the long suffering or the patience of God waited in the days of no, the why they are no preparing for an interview that is eight souls of saved by water. You say, what's that mean about being a woman preaching the Spirit? Well, you better ask somebody to hire me. I've got my opinion. I've got my opinion. But I'm not interested in that tonight. What I'm interested in is the Bible says the Lord waited. The long suffering of God waited. Did you ever realize that God waited a hundred years? 20 years and so for eight people to be saved. Just eight people. Just eight people. God waited 120 years. Oh, what a patient God we have. But His patience will not last forever. In the run out, it could run out. 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 It could run
Every time I fail. Every time I fail. I believe God. I don't know. I believe God. That song, the theology is right. I like right. the thought of it. The thought of it. The fact that when we see it, it grieves God. Amen. 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 I believe God still. I believe God still grieves. I hate to think. I hate to think that there's been a lot of times that I've called God. Amen. 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 I hate to know that I, hate to know that that I caused the that I caused God of heaven to grieve, but, but I know I have. I know I have. I know I have. I know I have. But we sin. We sin. We disobey God. We disobey God. We fail God. God. We fail God. We fail God. It makes God grieve. God grieve. And I believe just as God was grieving in the days before the flood, the last days before He destroyed the earth and the water, I believe the same God tonight is grieving. What's going on in the world tonight, man? You know, grieves God. God. Our Supreme Court, our Supreme Court passes and says it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Six man. That grieved the heart of God. He said, "How do you know that? It grieved me. It grieved me. I'm not as holy as God is. It grieved me. It moved me to tears. I know it grieves God. It grieves God." Yeah. Grieves God. Grieves God. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. It, it, it's a shame. It's a shame that what we call the Supreme Court, Court. The Supreme Court, thinks no more about the Word of God, the God, 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 than to do something like that. It grieved God. God is grieved. God. God is God. Grieved. Amen. Ephesians four and thirty. You say God can't be grieved. The Holy Ghost is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And Ephesians four and thirty. Say, grieve not say, the Spirit of God. Don't grieve the Holy Ghost. Grieve the Holy and, Ghost. In and in that same he chapter, he tells us what he grieves tells us what God. Grieves God. He says bitterness grieves God. Gives us seven things that grieve God. Bitterness grieves God. Grieves God. Not if you got bitterness in your heart. Bitterness in your heart. Or someone or somebody. It's a grief to God. Amen. It grieves the Holy Spirit of God. I'll tell you one of the reasons we can't get God in our services. In our services. In our churches are filled with bitterness. Amen. Amen. People are bitter about this. They're bitter. Raft, grieves God. Grieves in Ephesians, in Ephesians, four and thirty, four and thirty. Raft, raft, raft. You say what he say? Say what he say? That's uh, that's how I'm going to get that somebody. Get somebody. I'm going to give them what they deserve. What they deserve. I'm going to get my revenge. There's people tonight There's people in the church that in the church are so bitter. They've been so bitter, bitter for years. They've been bitter for years. They're grieving. They're grieving. Amen. They're Amen. trying to get They're somebody. To get somebody. You better leave that stuff up to God. Stuff up Amen. God. Amen. Amen. It's his mind. I will repay, saith the Lord. Saith the Lord. Amen. 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 You better let God better handle let that. God handle Amen. that. Years ago, Amen. we first Years started ago, the we first started started church up on the square. And after about six and after months, about six a months, few men, few men we got, got together, got together got and they said, we're going to get the preacher a raise. I made $50 a week. $50 a week. They said we're gonna give they a free trade twenty five trade twenty five a week raise a week raise we're gonna raise it we're gonna raise it there was one there was man one there in the room man there in the room and he said uh, and he he's said, just uh, preaching for money preaching so he's doing he's doing seventy five dollars seventy five dollars a week wow. 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 a week wow. Wow. Yeah. they said he's just preaching for money preaching for money. And one of the guys said, well, every time we give the preacher a raise or help the preacher, God bless his church. blesses the church. He said, oh, let's just give him a million dollars. God really blesses. God really blesses. Amen. 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 Sometimes I, sometimes I, I'm not slow to anger. I'm not slow to anger. I did live at peace I with all the peace wide with all the wide within me. But I lost it that but night. I lost it that night. And I said, sir, I said, sir, I said, I'm not preaching said, for I'm money. Not preaching for money. I said, furthermore, I said, there's not enough money that could be given me to make me put up with a scoundrel like you. Like you. Like you. Like you. <laughs> Well, he got bitter. Well, he got bitter. He 
He said, I'll never be back in that church again. I found it to be in that family. I got over it. I got over it. I wasn't mad about it. I wasn't mad for months on the end. I see him out and try to speak to him. I did not have no desire in my heart for anything bad to happen to him. But listen. Our Listen, church is filled with, with that stuff. It grieves the Holy grieves Spirit of God. It grieves God. God. Amen. Amen. If you're sitting over here, you're you don't sitting like over somebody here, over you here. Like somebody over here. That grieves God. That grieves God. Grieves God. Grieves God. Grieves God. Grieves God. And since we're letting everything out tonight, I might as well say this. I might as well say this. I know that divorce happens. I know that divorce happens. I know there's reasons. I know there's reasons for divorce. But there's people. There's people that never get over. That never get over. Amen. There's people that there's Peter that the other partner the other and they don't like them and they don't want nobody else to like nobody else to like. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and get quiet. I'm going to preach you. I'm going to preach you. Amen. 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 My mother and dad separated when I was in the eleventh grade. They separated. They separated. Mom, she was bitter Mom, about it. Was bitter all, about her it. Her life. all of her she life. She turned all the turned other all kids the against other dad. Kids and against dad. Didn't want to go around. Didn't want to go around. Something bad about it. Something bad dad about got it. over it pretty quick. Over he was bitter, bitter about it. Bitter. But, but life went on. Life went on. Life went on. My dad got put in a nursing home there in Glasgow. He got his heart right with God. He come to church every Sunday for about 10 years. I testified every Sunday in Georgia. I hear him tonight. Daddy would stand up. Daddy would say, I want to thank God for my seven kids. And I want to thank God for my salvation. It's the only thing I've ever had in this life. I didn't lose. I didn't lose. Lost her house, cost her furniture, her furniture, everything. About two years later, Mom went, later, in, the Mom went in the same nursing home. Mom was on station Mom one, station and Dad was on station, on station two. On station two. And Mom said, "Don't tell Mom him, said, I'm in don't here. tell him I'm in here. I don't want to run into I it. Don't want to run into it." So, run into it. so for three or four so years, for three or four years, Mama knew he was Mama over there. He, he was didn't even know Mama was over there. Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve. I went out to see my mother. I went out to see my mother. You ever know what a nursing home's like on Christmas Eve? If anybody ever goes see their grandparents or parents or brothers and sisters, they'll do it at Christmas time. The nursing home was full. I went into Mama's room. And it was full. And Mama said, you want to just walk, take a little walk? It's so hot in here and full. And I said, yeah, that'd be fine. I got my mother's hand. We started walking. Down the aisle, we walked for a while. And I said, Mama, we better turn around right here. And she said, Why? I said, Well, Daddy's right over there. This is Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. She said, Let's just go see. Let's just go see. She said, I'm old and he's old, and neither one of us is going to be around long. And don't need to harbor these grudges. Amen. I'm talking about making a young man's Christmas. Amen. I mean, I was a grown man, but that was the best Christmas George ever had in my life. You say, why? And there's people that are full of bitterness because of divorce and things that happen, and there may be somebody more to blame. There may be a reason for it, but don't stay mad the rest of your life about it. Why? It grieves God. Amen. It grieves the Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. Preacher Revival one time there's two brothers, deacons, one sat there and one sat there. They hadn't spoken to each other for seven years. Oh, Don't you know we had a good revival? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You see, God can't move in that kind of an atmosphere. He's too green to move in that kind of an atmosphere. Not only anger, but he said clamor and malice and evil speaking. Uh, evil speaking. Evil speaking grieves God. Amen. To speak evil to one of his children. Amen. And it moved me to tears to hear my children, my grandchildren, one or the other, tell the other one they hated them, even though I knew they didn't really mean it. It was like sticking a dagger in my heart. How do you think God feels when He hears this church say something about that church and, and they hate each other and they're bitter and angry? I tell you, it grieves the heart of God. Amen. By the way, can I say this? If you let me back up a little bit. 
You see all this stuff. People say, preacher, church is an awful shake tonight. All this stuff going on in the church. I, I see them ordaining homosexuals. I see them married people of the same sex. They said, preacher, the church is in an awful shape. I said, your problem is, is that every time you hear the word church, you think it's God's church. I said, God's church don't do that kind of stuff. But God's church is not like that, amen. Every time you hear a church doing this or that, I don't think it's because it's a church. It's God's church. It ain't so, amen. It ain't so. Lord was grieving. Oh, yeah. So said, what was God grieving about? Well, this will get you here. The Lord said, He repented the Lord that He made man on the earth and grieved Him. God was grieving about what He made. Yes, sir. We were calling the grief of God as the people of that day was. God was grieving over the very thing He made. Amen. I've had people in 44 years of preaching, I've had people that had really problem kids just in jail and out of the jail, just up and down. They spent every dime they had. They done everything to help them they could. And I've actually heard them make this statement. I, I tell you what, uh, preacher, I, I wish I never had that child. I, I wish I never had that child. I, can I tell you, God was looking down I, on earth and He was greed. And God said, I wish I never made them. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I wish I never made them. God was grieved at what man had done. Amen. And so what was man doing? Well, God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and the every imagination of thoughts of his heart were all the evil continually. I want to ask you tonight, but I'm pretty pretty sure it'd be a hundred percent if I did. Every person sitting in these chairs tonight, and a man standing here on the platform. You had some kind of an evil thought today. Amen. I mean, you've been driving down the road listening to gospel music. And all at once this thought comes in, and you say, Where did that come from? Yeah. Amen. We know where it come from. We may have all had an evil thought today. Amen. But we've not all had evil thoughts all day. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You see. Back in that day, the Bible said every thought of man's heart and imagination was continually evil. Wow. It grieved God. What it made, it grieved God what man had done. But here's what grieved God the most. Look at verse 5 or verse 7. God said of the Lord, said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and creeping thing, and the fowls of the air for repenteth me that I have made them. You know what grieved God the most? Not what He made, not what He made it done, but what God was about to have to do. Right. He didn't want to do it. God said, I wouldn't have any perish. Amen. But it all come to repent. Amen. The old prophet Ezekiel said in Ezekiel 33 and verse 11, he said, God has no pleasure in the, in the death of the wicked. Amen. God has no pleasure when wicked sinners die. He loves you. Amen. He wants you to be saved. Amen. He wants you to go to heaven. Amen. Some people... Sometimes because of the kind of preacher they hear, some people have got in their mind that God's just sitting up there and He can't wait to zap somebody or to send some kind of a crisis or a pandemic or something like that. I, listen, God may, may let it happen. I, the devil does it, but God lets it happen. I, we might say that God uses the devil to do His dirty work. But God don't want to do it. It grieves the Lord. Amen. Can I tell you the Bible said, 1 Peter 3 and 9, the Bible said the Lord is long suffering toward us. Thank God. Toward us. But neighbor, don't forget 2 Peter 3 and verse 10. Amen. Well, the Bible said, know this, that the day of the Lord will come. 
Amen. Amen. Of course, the earth shall melt with a fever and heat, and the elements thereof will be dissolved. I, listen, it's going to happen. It's in the Word of God, but it grieves God that He has to do it. Amen. 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 You know, I lost tonight. Somebody said, uh, Joe, a witness told me one day, they said, God, He's God of love. He wouldn't put nobody in hell. I said, if you get there, you have to put you in it because He's got the key. Amen. Right? Amen. But He don't want to. Right. He don't want to lock you up. He don't want to cast you into a burning lake of fire. He don't want you to be there forever and ever and ever. God wants you to be saved. And it grieves God that you die lost without Jesus. It grieves God. Whatever God was doing back then, as sure as I'm standing here, He's doing it tonight. God was warning. Amen. God was reading. Mm -hmm. right. Verse 8. But Noah found grace Amen. in the eyes of the Lord. See, Peter 2 5 says this about God. He spared not the old world, but right. he saved Noah. Right. Right. What was God doing in that wicked Andalusian world that was about to end? What was God doing? Well, God was warning. God was grieving. But even in the world as wicked as it was in Noah's day, only eight people left uh, that, that, that found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Even in that wicked day, God was saving. Amen. Yeah. Amen. God still saving the name. Amen. Amen. You can get saved today. You can say, why are God still saving? Amen.
There's a lot of things I went to do, a lot of things I could do, but I did not do them. You say, why? I fear what God would do. We're living in a world where there is no fear of God in their eyes. Amen. They couldn't be afraid of God and do what they're doing. Amen. And that's why they're not saved. Amen. Amen. That's right. But Noah had faith and Noah, he had fear and it caused him to move. Amen, preacher. It caused him to move. So what else do I have? The Bible said in that verse, he prepared the ark for the saving of his house. Oh, I had a family. <laughs> you say you got to have a family to get saved? No, you don't have to. But God's put this incentive in there. He's, he's went every direction trying to get people to get saved. George said, Is your granddaddy prayed for you? He had faith. The old man feared God. And the old man had a family. A lot of you tonight, you know why you're here tonight? You had a grandma or a grandpa or a mama or a neighbor, an uncle or aunt, and they loved you. They got saved and they were going in the ark, so to speak, but Noah didn't want to go by himself. Noah was concerned about his family. Somebody said, Preacher, I got saved because I didn't want to go to hell. Good reason. Amen. That's why I got saved. I didn't want to go to hell. Amen. You say, Preacher, that's not a good reason. Any reason is a good reason to really get Amen. saved. Amen. I would see old man years ago out door knocking. Somebody asked me to go see him. And I went in to see him. He invited me in to sit down and talk to him, chit chat for a while. Then I asked him to say, he said, no, he said, I'm not saved. And he went back to talk about the war he was in. He said, I saw some of my buddies die. He said, I don't like to talk about it, really. And I said, sir, can I ask you something? He said, yeah. I said, I bet you anything, you had a godly mother. Mm -hmm. He started crying. He said, that's right. He said, I think she prayed me through the war and back, preacher. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And I said, I bet you anything. I said, is she still alive? He said, no, she's been gone for a long time. I said, I bet you that she promised her that you'd meet her in heaven. Amen. He started crying. He said, preacher, how'd you know that? I said, well, if you've got a good godly mother, one of the last things to be on her mind was knowing that she'd be going to heaven. Amen. You'd be getting saved. He didn't get saved that night. But about four weeks later, I was sitting in my living room and I heard a horn blow. And I looked out and there was a car I didn't recognize out there, Brother Ralph. And I started out to the car. He began to roll the window down and I seen who it was. And when I got up to the car, there were tears running down both sides of his face. And he said, Preacher, I just had to come and tell you I got saved. He said, after you left that night, he said, I couldn't sleep and it was torment for days and days. And he said, I took all I could take. And he said, I got up one morning and I got the daily paper and I began to look at the church announcements and I tried to find where revival was going on. And he said, I found one and I went to that revival and I got saved. <laughs> and he said, I'll see my mama one day in heaven. Amen. You see, what was the incentive there? His mother in heaven. Amen. 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 God's made it that way. Amen. Praise God. God's still saving folks. Amen. Amen. Yeah. World's bad. I've never seen it any worse in my lifetime. That's right. But a few weeks ago, we had two people say, George told me the other day y'all had one say. Amen. We were talking about Brother Alton, seeing terrible say. Yeah. said, what are you saying? I'm saying, yes, it's bad. It's going to get worse. Amen. But God's still saying. Amen. 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 Same thing God was doing then, He's doing it now. God's saving, 
God's grieving and He may be the one causing His grief tonight. Amen. You want to come to apologize to Him tonight and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Right. I'm sorry tonight. God is saving, God was grieving, and God is warning. Yeah. That truck passed by. This tent is warning. Amen. 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 It's a warning. It is. Amen. Yes, sir. That's what God's doing. Yes. In the days of Noah. That's what God's doing in our day. Right. Amen. Father, thank you tonight for these dear folks that come out sitting under this hot tent to hear preaching. To be a testimony, Lord, to those going up down the road. Thank you. Lord, I don't know what all you've done in this service tonight. I don't even know what all you want to do. But I hope, Lord, that your spirit that's striving with different people tonight about different things, that they do understand God's patience will eventually wear out. Help us all tonight to obey God and do what He wants us to do in this service. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.